today will be from Philippians 4, 10 through 14. <clears throat> I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have rev- revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. Good morning. Everyone be sure and get a handout as they are passing them around. Scientists tell us that people learn primarily in three ways. Some learn visually, that's why we have the PowerPoint. Some learn auditorially or through their ears, that's why I'm talking. And some learn kinesthetically, that's by doing something. That's why I provided you a handout. So I hope that you will make use of that. If you're totally right brain and ultimately creative and you just want to scribble on your handout and draw pretty pictures, that's okay. But as we go through the lesson, every blank will be ultimately filled out. My name is Ken Davidson. Some of you may not have met me. My wife Barbara and I live in Payson most of the time. We have a second dwelling down here and, and it's only two minutes away from this building. So it's been very convenient for us and we've really enjoyed it. I am retired, and people say from what, and I say which career. I spent 25 years in the electronics industry, most of that in high-tech sales and marketing. I spent a few years in financial services, but then the last 17 years of my full-time employment, I was in full-time ministry, uh, actually finishing in Payson, where we live now. And this morning, I want to talk about the Christian's can-do attitude. And I've also called this a sentence sermon. I'm used to having a monitor. I just want to make sure that, okay, it's working like it's supposed to. That's great. Now, I'm going to say more than one sentence, so don't get your hopes up. But I won't do like Paul and preach till midnight. At least I don't think I will. The source of this material is from a book that I have read and like very much called Lead Like Jesus by Ken Blanchard and Phil Hodges. Oh, and before I get too further into this, I want to thank you, Patrick, for those great songs. It was a great setup, and, and I love the song you've selected after the lesson. But in this book, one of the chapters, they talk about the habits of a servant leader. And the particular section in the chapter is the study and application of Scripture, which is sort of kind of what prompted this. But then, in particular, they gave nine practical ways to improve Scripture meditation. We will apply some of these nine ways to the passage that we're going to be looking at. Not all of them, but I hope that you'll, you'll see it. Now, the main verse out of our scripture reading that I want you to focus on this morning is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And from the New King James, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want you to be involved this morning. Let's say it again, but say it with me. You ready? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You said it. Do you believe it? That's a tough verse. And we're going to see some things, hopefully, as we go through this, that will help us understand, apply, and enjoy that verse even more. You just heard this, but let's look at the context again. But I rejoiced with the Lord greatly. Now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Think about this verse. Have you ever used an all-inclusive statement? Let's say in a relationship, you say to your wife, well, you always do this. Wife says to the husband, you never pick up your socks. Well, yes, I did. Back in 1972, I picked up a pair of socks. I put them in the dirty clothes. You can't say I never do that. Well, we can't, but God can. And when he says we can do all things through Christ, he means it. But what does it really mean? How do we apply this? Well, we're going to make it a sentence sermon. And in addition to that, we will have some supporting scriptures as we go through this. And I will give you those scriptures. Some I will read. Well, I'm going to read all of them, but you can jot them down. And I'll try to go slow enough that if you are taking notes and you want to put these in there, you can do that. Where does Paul start? He says, I. It's a simple word. What is I? What does that mean? I is a personal pronoun. It's personal. It belongs to the individual. I. We are involved when we say I. And we are involved individually. This is not a group thing. This is something for each and every one of us. So I. I can. What does that mean? Well, can means I have the ability, the power, or the skill to what? I can do. I can do. I can accomplish. I'm getting ahead. Sorry, behind. I can accomplish, finish, or I can complete. I can do. I can do what? I can do all. This is the tough part. This is where when Paul wrote all, he meant all. When you think of the word all, that can mean the whole. The whole thing. The whole enchilada, we say. A whole pie. That can mean every. Every single thing. Every single person. Okay, sorry. I'm getting behind. This is not due. Okay, back on due, 2 Timothy 4. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all those who have loved his appearing. Okay, we, I can do all things. Things are anything that is or may become an object of thought. You know, we have to think about something before we do it. And so when Paul says, I can do all things, it's anything we can think about. Anything God puts on our heart that we want to do. Do for him, do for others, do in our life. We have to think about it before we do it. And Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 3, and he said, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, we can't outthink God. We can do all these things that we've been talking about. The power that works within us to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I can do all things. Now, if we stopped there, we'd be scratching our heads and asking, well, how? How can we do it? How can we prepare? How can we study? How can we learn to do all things? Well, it's not on our own. We do it through. What does through mean? I can do all things through, by way of. Paul's going to tell us the help that comes along by which we can do all things through. And to give you a taste of it, Jesus himself said in John 14, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. There's our word again. I can do all things through. Jesus said, through me. And Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. And that's really the heart of the 
message that Paul is trying to give us. That it all depends on being in relationship with Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Why? Because he's the source of all power. God tells us that nothing in the world that was made, that has been made, was made except through him. Jesus was involved in creation with his father. He is the ultimate source of power. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, look at 9 and 10. And he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. More gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weakness, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake. But when I am weak, then I am strong. So Christ is the source of power. So I can do all things through Christ. Who? Who? What does that mean? Who is the one that? He is the object. Christ is the fulfillment of this. I can do all things through Christ. The one that does what? Who strengthens. We already saw that. He's the source of that power. He's the source of that strength. He strengthens us. He makes us strong. He makes us strong. And Christ strengthens means to increase the strength of. Again, from Paul, a supporting verse, Ephesians 6.10. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. He is the source. He's the one to whom we turn when we need strength, when we need help. And then I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. And the last word in our sentence is me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we started with I and we end with me. We've come full circle. We go I to me, but again, it's personal. So once again, let's say it together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, let's make some application of this. Another way to study Scripture or to focus on meditating on Scripture is to state the opposite of what you've just read or just looked at. And the way that we would do this on this particular verse, I can do nothing without Christ who strengthens me. Jesus himself made the same observation in John 15 to the apostles. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So the opposite of I can do all things is we can't do anything without Christ. Now I have a homework assignment for you, or if you think really quick, you can do it now. Another way to do this is to state this in your own words. Now you see there at the bottom it says 10 words. That's I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Limit yourself to 10 words. Here's an example. This is the one that I came up with. The Lord is strong enough for me to accomplish anything. So just think about that this afternoon or over the week. And, and if you like to do that sort of thing, see if you can say it in 10 words and make it personal for yourself. Another thing that we can do is we can focus on part of a verse. And I've chosen to focus on two important words. And to me, the two most important words in all of this are the words can do. Now, I told you I'm retired. But I want to tell you a a story of something that happened to me personally when I was working. When I was in the electronics industry, I was living in Northern California at the time, and I was the the manager of all customer applications and demonstrations. We sold expensive equipment that made wafers that little microprocessors are made on that uh, people like Intel would use or AMD would use. And, And before people would buy anything, they would have to send samples in and we would demonstrate it for them. I reported the vice president of technology And he gave me the highest compliment that any manager ever gave me in my entire career. Because he was telling me one day, he told me, you know, Ken, I I really appreciate the fact that when 
I give you an assignment or ask you to do something, I know that it will be done. You're a doer. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And so when we look at this verse, we all need to become doers. We need to have that can-do attitude in our service for God, in our worship, in our everyday life, in our jobs, at school, at home. Have a can-do attitude. Become doers. Don't just think about things. That's good. Don't just plan things. That's also good. But actually do what you think and plan. Become a doer. And one of the things that might help us become a doer is to ask five important or key or critical questions. The first question, what can I do? Just have a free thought association for you. What can I do? All kinds of things might come to your mind. We call it brainstorming. The second question, why does it need to be done? If you can find a good reason for doing something, sometimes that makes it easier to start and to continue and to finish. Why does it need to be done? The next one, where can I do it? Can I do it right where I am? Do I have to go somewhere? But just think about the things that we want to do. Where can I do it? Another important question is who can help me do it? We're individually responsible, but we're not in this alone. In this verse, we see that Christ is one who can help us do things. But since we live in community in the kingdom of God, we can turn to others and seek their help and their assistance, get their involvement. Sometimes when you get more people involved in a project, number one, more things get done, but it can be more fun for everybody. So who can help me do it? And then the fifth question that that I have come up with is, how can I get started doing it? Chinese have a proverb, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. How do I get started? What is that first step that I need to take to make this happen? Well, in addition to things like the opposite and saying our own words and, and two important words, we can change the verse just a little bit or ask a different question a little bit to make it personal. How do we make it personal? What will I do about this verse as it relates to my life? And that's really what I want you to think about this morning as we've looked at this verse, this can-do attitude. What will I do to make this apply in my life when I go out today and tomorrow and the rest of our lives? How do we make it personal? Well, let's wrap this up. I don't want to keep you all morning. Three other ways to say it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We've seen that. Collectively, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And then my challenge is you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. One last verse in the lesson is yours. Second Peter chapter 1. As we know Jesus better, his divine power gives us everything we need for living a godly life. Pause there for just a minute. There's another one of those all-inclusive statements. You see that? Jesus gives us everything we need. It's all about him And Jesus is always enough. Because he's the one that gives us everything we need. And Paul, excuse me, Peter specifically here says, for living a godly life. Godly people are doers. Godly people say, I can do all things. They have the confidence. They have the faith. And they have the determination and the drive and the energy to go out and get things done in the kingdom. Because Jesus has given us everything we need. And he continues. He has called us to receive his own glory and goodness. And by that same mighty power, there's Jesus' power again. Only this time, look at what the power does. It gives us his promises. You go through scripture, there's all kinds of promises in the Bible. And we need to always remember that those promises are backed up by God's power, by the Holy Spirit power. And as Peter tells us here, by the power of Christ. 
He's given us everything we need for a godly life. He's given us promises, and he's backed them up. And he's promised that you will escape the decadence all around you caused by evil desires and that you will share in his divine nature. I chose the New Living Translation primarily because of that one word, decadence. I look around at society in our country and in other parts of the world, and decadence definitely fits the picture. People have all kinds of money anymore. Uh, read articles this past week. Uh, there's, there's people went out to dinner and they spent $799 on a dinner for two cooked by some three Michelin three-star rated chefs. How much food could you buy to feed your family for $799? There are places now that will, for $50 or $65, depending on the menu, will provide your pet a tasting menu so you can find out what your pet likes the best. Decadence is all around us. And yet, as we were talking about in class this morning, Earthly wealth provides a lot of benefit. And God's not against wealthy people. God's not against having wealth. But God wants us to remember that that only carries us so far. And as Christians, we want to escape that decadence and look beyond this life so that we can have an eternal life with God. And part of that eternal life is I can do all things. I can have an eternal life through Jesus Christ. But this power to do all things, the power to accept these promises, to escape the world around us, to become holy, and to have the power to do all things, depends on one key component. It all happens in Christ. You can't access his power if you're apart from him. We saw that. I, he said, apart from me, you can do nothing. If you're not attached to my roots, my vine, you as branches will not bear any fruit. We have to be in Christ. And so that begs the question this morning, are you in Christ? If you are, praise the Lord. You're a doer. You can do all things through Christ because he is in you and you are in him. And he will strengthen you. If you're not, we have 